Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, if you still remember <laughs> this channel. I'm finally out of my cave of depression. This have been really tough few months, but uh, things are getting better and uh, I'm ready to film again. And anyway, I will talk about this rough period in my probably next video, uh, all about all the updates, news and stuff. Uh, but today uh, we have a more entertaining topic and in this video, as you have read from the title, I want to talk about the Finnish words that uh, Russian language and maybe a few others really lack. I have chosen these words from the Ule site, from the Russian Ule, and they have a um, section. Uh, which is called something like a Finnish corner and there are lots of uh, various articles and some of them feature these words. It is a really great idea to introduce uh, to Russian readers of this site uh, some of these words because some of them, not some of the words, some of these people and the readers live in Finland and uh, they for sure need to know these words and uh, it's also interesting for others who learn the language. So, let's start. So, the first word that I have is um, absolutisty. And um, this word means a person who doesn't drink at all. I don't know any of such people. <laughs> I know, probably I do. I do know a few. And the interesting fact is that in Russia this word, we have a similar word, like without the E engine, it means the person who is for, um, what, what's it called, absolutistic, absolutist uh, form of um, like ruling the country or something like that. And in Finnish it seems to have a completely different meaning. It's also said in this article that uh, this word is more up to date, if I can call it like that, because nowadays uh, Finnish youth uh, is drinking less and less. That's interesting and I think it's very reassuring. The second word is... Uh, oh my god... Runnakökannit? Uh, which means um, like getting drunk uh, with the speed of a storm and uh, it means that you drink uh, lots of alcohol in a very short time. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, that sounds really scary and the consequences are very unpredictable. Don't do that. Well, if you want to, of course you can, but you know, uh, I'm not sure it's gonna be pleasant. <laughs> then we have a phrase uh, which is uh, connected with the previous word and it's Liskoyan Ö, which means the night of the lizards and it's obviously what happens after you do or have Runnakökannit <laughs> and it means that like you would black out after, and you do stuff that you don't remember after this getting drunk and uh, probably <laughs> some of the creators of this word saw the spirits of lizards or whatever. <laughs> probably how else this would appear. And in fact, in Russia we call it um, that you are visited by a squirrel. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> but well, probably Finns see lizards when they get drunk and Russians see squirrels. Then there is another word that we don't have in Russian and it's sohva peruna and it sounds like a direct translation from English from couch potato. And in the article it is said that three years ago uh, the Ule program uh, got a prize for the best entertainment show and the program was about people who just were sitting at home on a couch and they were commenting everything that was on TV. Um, I can't say that I agree that this show might be the best, but well, <laughs> tastes differ. And uh, we don't have uh, the same thing in Russia. I mean, we have the same people, but uh, I think we call them just people who sit at home. There is a word like the Masyed, so it's literally meant uh, home sitter. <laughs> um, yeah, we don't have 
couch potato. Next, there is a very funny word, and we also don't have anything like that. And it's um, kevdon rust, which means uh, the robbery of a cradle. And this word describes the situation when uh, people marry someone who is much younger than them. And it's said that uh, this word also can be used uh, when we talk about people who are, for example, 60 and 45. Really? <laughs> and uh, I have a question for you. Do you have a word which uh, can be used vice versa when people marry someone much older than they are? The next few words are about food, which I love, and you know that. <laughs> uh, the first one is Anoskateus. Uh, which means uh, jealousy about uh, the dish and um, it's about the situation when um, your friend or whoever you come to the cafe or the restaurant with has uh, the food which is more appealing to you. I actually have a friend who always experiences this anus <laughs> Then there is a word which in English is comfort food and it's lochturoka uh, again, we don't have such word, we just eat what <laughs> we are sad. And yeah, basically it's the food which helps you to overcome stress, anxiety or whatever. And this is not really applicable to my life because when I'm stressed uh, I can't really eat. Probably that's why I haven't gained any extra kilos during the quarantine. Uh, Okay, lucky me. And another word about this food topic, and uh, it's ahku, uh, which means that uh, you are in a situation when you <laughs> over eat and you can't even get up and you can't breathe. And yeah, that's uh, a very difficult situation to be in. Um, we also don't have a, a Russian analogy of this word. I uh, rarely find myself in these situations, but I clearly remember the last time I was in this difficult condition. It was last year in Helsinki and, you know, there are lots of uh, sushi places where you just pay something like 10 euros and you can eat everything you want there in any quantity. <laughs> And well, I love sushi and my friend also does. And we really had this ahku because when we went out of this uh, cafe um, <laughs> I seriously considered rolling to our hotel. It was really difficult. And this 20 minute walk was a disaster. Actually, we also wanted to walk a bit uh, that day, that evening. But before that, we had to lie down for like three hours. <laughs> so yeah, not a pleasant thing to experience. There is a word which is the analogy of a window shopper. And it's Renkan Potkia, which means like the person who kicks... Uh, what's the word? Tires. The person who kicks tires of the car. And it basically means the person who just walks around the store, um, looks at the stuff, asks questions, and but uh, this person never buys anything. <laughs> I actually doubt this um, definition a bit, because um, if you don't have the intention of buying anything, why would you ask questions? Like maybe in a uh, western world, like further <laughs> western world people do that but really can you imagine a Finn or a Russian who has this small talks or just the talks which are not necessary um, I actually can't so <laughs> do you guys do that? <laughs> do you talk if you don't need to? As for the stuff that you can buy in the shops there is a word for um, What's it called? A tape which is silver. I have no idea what it's called in English, like a, a very good kind of tape which can stick anything together. And um, it is called... <laughs> I love this. Jesus tape. <laughs> like Jesus tape. <laughs> it's wonderful. Um, it's said that uh, it's called like that because uh, this tape does 
miracles and it saves everyone. I wish we had the similar word in Russian. The next word is brilliant, especially for the northern and west Russia, we really could use that. And it's takatalvi. It is used to describe the situations when you think that winter went away and now you have spring and you are happy and then boom! <laughs> winter comes back and it's colder than it was and yeah a horrible time really horrible time I think that we had the same thing this year maybe like for a short period of time and yeah the word is brilliant we don't have anything like that and I think we should implement this in the Russian language now there is a word which has too many double vowels <laughs> it's gonna be difficult Usa not only vowels, it has double T. Again, usa wut, usa wutomus, and it's uh, literally translated as uh, uh, the new helplessness. And we use this word to describe young people who can't do some basic routine stuff at home, for example, cook an egg or fix their light bulb or something like that. I can't say that it is really applicable to me or my friends, but you know, sometimes uh, this happens. Like, uh, I for sure experienced these situations a few times, but well, we have Google for that, don't we? <laughs> and by the way, do you have a word which can describe uh, another situation? For example, when old people don't know how to use the internet or all that stuff. Can it be the old helplessness? <laughs> and the last word for today is a word which has the analogy in English. And it's korvamato, which means the earworm. And we use it to talk about the melody or the song, which is stuck in our head and we can't get rid of it. I have a few songs in my life which I can call korvamato. Uh, the first one is by a French Canadian singer, you don't know that. Uh, the second is Sweet Dreams, and I also can think about two songs, two Finnish songs, which are Korvamato, and it, they are both by Antti Tuisku, and it's Keinutan and Hanuri. Why? Why have I done this to myself? Now that I remembered them, I will be singing them for a week probably. <laughs> so that's it for today's video. I really enjoyed making it, because there are so many new fun words, so thanks, Ule. And I really think that uh, these words uh, should be implemented in other languages, apart from the famous Kalsari Candid. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye!